everyone should know about, and it's contraceptives. Correct. Things change over the years as well, so it's yeah. good to have a refresher uh, on what is out there on the market. Mm -hmm. So all of the babies you hear in the audience, everyone ignored this advice. Yes, that's correct. To have those babies. Yeah. There are two sort of big categories. One is hormonal, uh, one is barrier. Yeah, so there is the principle of preventing the sperm and the eggs from connecting. Yeah. That's barrier contraception. So that would be something like condoms or something like a diaphragm or a cervical cap, something that essentially creates an impasse for the sperm and the eggs to meet. Right. Hormonal contraception is something that secretes hormones. So every month we've talked about how you get your eggs out, your brain sends a hormone to your ovaries, then you grow an egg and you ovulate it, and after you ovulate it, progesterone comes around. So the hormonal ones play with that so that it can prevent the eggs from coming out altogether, so you're not releasing mm -hmm. eggs anymore. And then the other part is progesterone, so it's two parts, estrogen and progesterone. If you give estrogen every day in the form of a pill or patch or whatever, that will prevent ovulation. And then when you give progesterone, it just makes the uterus not a happy place to grow a baby. So oh. the lining gets thin, the mucus gets really thick. That's why you know when, after you ovulate, if you notice, so if we talk about different ways of contraception, yeah. one of them is what people talk about as the rhythm method. Yes. It's the least effective way. Just right. saying. Yeah. Very ineffective. <laughs> so we really grade birth control's ability by its ability for effectiveness. Right. The rhythm method, checking your cervical mucus, so it's thin at first with estrogen, and then it becomes really gluey, so the sperm can't swim through the cervical mucus, or doesn't really like to swim through the cervical mucus. Right. That's an effect of progesterone. So if you look at all of that, I want to show this too. So this is what you look like on the inside. Okay, so do you want to put that back in? Because we didn't uh, get that. So this is, this is uh, uterus. So, and when you take that away? I take it away. So if I take it away, it's like I splice you down the middle. Yeah. And so this is, well, really that sounds gross. I'm not going to do it, but, but this is what it would that's look what like. It would look like. So this is the uterus, yeah. and this is the vaginal canal, uh -huh. and the base is the cervix. So for example, one of the hormonal forms of birth control is a ring, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you have the ring, I'm just going to give an example, you would insert it, you squeeze it, and this little um, plastic portion actually secretes the hormones, estrogen right. and progesterone. You put it up, and it sits at the back, top of your vagina yeah. and behind your bone here, your pubic bone, called the symphysis pubis. And it stays there? It stays there. You put it in once a month. Once and a month. then you leave it in for three weeks and then you take it out. Uh -huh. And then after you get your period, you put it back in on the first day of your period. So that's one of the things. And it works not by creating a barrier, mm -hmm. but it works by actually secreting hormones and preventing ovulation. Is there any reason to think the hormonal way might be um, a, a less safe way of doing it? Or the barrier way is a, is a more, more safe, safe way? Like, is there any, is there any empirical so not evidence everyone, that would show that? Yes, there is. So not everyone, there are actual contraindications to hormonal birth control. Okay. So not everybody can use hormones that come from a ring or hormones that come from pills or hormones that come from a patch. Right. Sometimes estrogen is contraindicated. So if someone's had breast cancer, for example, you can't use estrogen. So that would be an inappropriate form of birth control. Right. Um, if someone has had uncontrolled liver disease because it's metabolized by the liver, you can't use estrogen in your birth control. If you've had blood clots, mm -hmm. um, if you have uncontrolled diabetes, if you have, um, I think that's pretty much it. But there are categories of contraindications to using the birth control. Uh, migraines with aura. So if okay. you have migraines that have that typical flashy light that you get before you get the really bad headache, yeah. estrogen is not a contraceptive hormone that for you. you. Want to yeah. use. So you more appropriately would be something that's a barrier form. So something like a diaphragm. So I'm going to take something else out. The good old fashioned diaphragm. Old fashioned diaphragm. Now. It's barrier, so the sperm can't get to the cervix. So right. the sperm would be ejaculated into the vagina, but it can't reach the because of the cap. And then you also put spermicidal gel inside to increase its effectiveness. Got it. So in and of itself, even with perfect use, it, it is good, but it's 92 to 96% effective. Something that a doctor would put into your uterus that secretes hormone like this. And I don't know if you can see, so it has little wings and it sits inside of a uterus like this. Mm -hmm. So this is called an intrauterine system okay? okay and what it does is not only does it have a mechanical 
kind of uh, inflammation within the uterus so an embryo wouldn't want to implant here. Yeah. But also that little mid portion secretes a hormone called levonorgestrel, which is progesterone, which thins the lining, makes the cervical mucus thick, makes it unlikely for the eggs and sperm to meet. So this is kind of a one-two punch. It's a little hormonal and it's a little local. We are secret. making this a terrible environment for a baby. Yeah, exactly. No one's going to want to mate It in wouldn't this be space. anywhere it's where not sperm be and eggs would be happy. But we What's should. What's the effectiveness rate of that one? The I is it an IUD? This is the most effective. It's, it's the an intrauterine effective. system because it has system. hormone and the intrauterine device. Uh, okay. Whereas something like, I don't know if you can see this. That teeny tiny That teeny little? tiny, this is called a copper T. Yeah. This is a, another intrauterine device. So okay. it doesn't have hormone, but again, it creates uh, an environment in the uterus that's not conducive to implantation. Got it. And we should say that all of these things, everybody, it's not right for everybody. Mm -hmm. Some things are right for some people. If you can't use estrogen, then maybe it's appropriate for you to have something that doesn't have any estrogen in it. Mm -hmm. Or to use barrier with spermicidal gel backup. Um, or to use a progestin mini pill, but that is really, you have to take it precisely at the same time every day or it will lose its effectiveness. And that's, that's the birth control pill? That is one type of birth control pill, of but control it only pill. has progesterone. So there are a mm. whole variety of them, be mm -hmm. they pills or patches or intrauterine devices or rings that secrete hormone. Yeah. You really have to have a conversation with your physician about your medical history, about what your needs are, and then which one is the best for you. And we should actually really say that no matter what you're using that will prevent ovulation or prevent implantation, nothing prevents you against a sexually transmitted infection, That's right. but the barrier thing. So okay. um, a condom or a female condom, have you ever seen a female condom? No, how do those work? Just before we go to break. Just before we go. <laughs> so it looks kind of like a condom, but it's broader because vaginas come in all shapes and sizes. Right. And some of them have a little ring on the end that you pinch, but essentially you put one finger in and put it up, I know I'm showing on TV, but when you put it up your vagina and it sits here and it protects from any touching, oh, really. So I you see. can still have intercourse. It lives yeah. in your vagina. You put it in right before sex. You can't put it in all day. It'll No not way. Yeah. That's uncomfortable. That would be fun. Okay, so you gotta do the research to figure out which one is for you. Yes, and okay. you have to talk to your doctor. Talk you to your can't, doctor. Yeah, just don't walk into a clinic. You really have to have a conversation because what's right for you might not be right for me, mm -hmm. for somebody else.